Did you buy this from Golby's? Um, I may have gotten a mad deal somewhere else. Mm, mad deal. What's that? No. Welcome back to the Barra Factory. This is Woody's 1989 Toyota Crown station wagon. Last week we pulled the two litre six cylinder supercharged engine out and fitted this FG Barra four litre turbo engine with a turbo 400. It all went in there pretty well after a little bit of tapping and chopping. So now we're up to the bits where we bolt on the shiny stuff and stare at it take some Instagram photos. On this side of the engine we've got this, I don't even know if it has a name, let's call it a TSF Plenum. We uh, designed these and my friend Denny makes them. Uh, this particular one is a bit different from the ones that are uh, normally sold in that it has a different flange on it to suit a very large 82mm throttle body that comes from Raceworks, that's a Bosch one. These are primarily designed for BA, BF Falcons. They fit on the lower runners of, of that particular manifold. They also fit EF to AU single overhead cam engines as well. And we have actually fitted one of these to a, a Barra powered XE Falcon that has the big strut towers on it. So it does have a little divot there built into the casting to suit that. You can buy these on the store at theskidfactory.com. On the other side there, you'll spot a very, very nice new shiny turbo. Uh, we swapped out the alternator that was in the box for the proper unit. That is a Garrett G40. I think it's an 1150, is it? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, they, we're gonna actually pull that apart and have a little bit of a look and measure some wheels and stuff because whenever I get a new turbo, I love to pull them apart and actually see physical sizes, see how it's constructed and get a bit of an idea of how they've made that such a better turbo than the old turbo that we also have here that Woody used to have. We had it stashed away for years, ready to go on this engine. But since then, many moons have passed and many tides and lots of technologies changed. So we're gonna have a little bit of a look and see what's different and why turbos are so much better these days. Turbo technology has come in leaps and bounds in the last decade or so. I've been there, I've seen it happen, and you know I'm into turbos, so I've taken notice. Uh, this turbo here was originally fitted to Woody's 1UZ about 10 years ago. It is a GT4094. At the time, it was the new turbo, and it was a pretty good thing. This one here is what we're going to fit to the Barra in the Crown Wagon. It is a G40 1150, so this is a pretty new one itself. Uh, it's uh, got the latest technology, I suppose you'd say, for uh, performance turbochargers. For a start, we can look at the materials used. This is obviously cast iron core, cast iron exhaust housing. This is some sort of stainless steel. I'm not gonna speculate on the metallurgy, but it's obviously not cast iron in both the core and the housing. So it's got good uh, heat properties. The, the biggest difference I think you'll find with these things is the material they use in the actual turbine itself and the shaft has changed quite a bit. Uh, I'm not sure what this one's made out of, but you can see there's a very different blade shape and thickness of the blade. Strengthening the material that they're making the blade out of allows them to thin it out, which allows for more gas flow, but they can still get the drive they need with the, with the angles of the blade. So you end up with a turbine that, that's got the amount of drive it needs to drive the compressor, but it also allows the engine to breathe. And that is very important. Uh, many engines suffer from uh, exhaust back pressure from turbos that either are too small or just not a very good design. And um, this is one of the things that you've got to look for when you're specking a turbo for an engine. Let's flip it over and have a look at the compressor side. See what's going on there. As you can see, we've got a billet compressor wheel 
on the G40. That's been a thing for quite a while now. There was a, a, an interim in the, G, in the GT40 called a GDX40 that had a billet compressor but with the same turbine. Uh, they were better, of course, than this old cast wheel here. That turbo there, I'd expect to maybe maybe make 600 horsepower at the wheels on that, um, that engine. Uh, whereas this one, which is actually smaller in the compressor by quite a bit, I'd expect it to make maybe 800 horsepower at the wheels. I'm not too sure, but it depends on the, the camshafts and the rest of the setup. But there's a huge difference in the, in the airflow capability as well as turbine flow. So we've ended up with turbos that are, are smaller but make a lot more power, like considerably more, not just a little bit. So that works well with your, your transmission. So in our, in our case, we've got a trans brake um, turbo 400. So lag is not really something we're worried about. We've also got an excellent converter to go on it. So this turbine housing that we've got on is a 119, which is I think the biggest one that they, they offer. T4 twin entry. The old GT40 is the same. Uh, that's a good choice for a, a large engine like this that has an automatic transmission with a good converter where lag is just not a thing. As soon as you stomp the pedal, it's going to come up into the zone where it's going to work. So you've got to select your turbine housing to your application. If it was a manual transmission car that you wanted to drift, you'd probably down, be down in maybe the 0.8 or 9 size. But this is the right one for the job for this. I'm really keen to see how this goes. We know they work well on a lot of other engines, but I haven't heard of too many being used on barras at this stage. So it's going to be cool to see what it does. The G40 is sitting on a upcycled manifold, which I purchased from Benny off the Cresta. Benny upgraded to a much larger turbo and a V-band housing, a V-band entry, sorry. So this manifold is a twin entry split pulse manifold, which works well with a six cylinder engine. Controlling all of the hudushas is a Go Fast Bits EX50 wastegate. This is going to go off the manifold here. We need to make a slight change as the steering box is in the way. So we need to, got to put some steam pipe on there to extend that up. But before we do that, we need to start on the dump pipe because this is also in the way. So three and a half inch stainless is going to be going down here. Wastegate go goes next to it and then down the bottom I'd like to plumb that back in before merging into some oval pipe. Plumb to, it to the atmosphere? No, plumb it back into the exhaust. Yeah, plumb to atmosphere. No, like plumb it back into the dump pipe. Yeah, but it all goes to the same place. And then it goes to the atmosphere at the back. Um, I will be changing into some oval pipe down the bottom there, so just making a dump down to a V-band and then we can transi transition into the oval part. So let's hook in, get it done. Twenty nine PSI minimum spring. Minimum? Yep. <laughs> jump under and line it up. That's you. Same frequency as an idling SR20.
That's the hot side all done. We've modified the existing uh, exhaust manifold to take the EX50 wastegate in a different position just so it fitted in the car. We've also fabricated this um, dump pipe and we've got it returned to the dump instead of to atmosphere, which is unusual. And uh, I demonstrated nicely to Woody why I don't like doing it because it takes ages. So we've got a little uh, bellow there because there's expansion going on here and they will end up stressing out and cracking eventually if you don't put a bellow or a slip joint. You can just use a slip joint, but um, we got our hands on a bellow thanks to Kyle. So that's all ready to go back on the engine in the car and we'll, we'll load the turbo cartridge back into it and we're going to move on to the intercooler and intercooler piping side of things. You did test fit this before you welded it, right? No, not with it together, no. What? Cooling system wise, we've retained the MA70 alloy radiator which we previously fitted when it was 1GGZD. We have to do some modifications to the upper and lower tank outlets to accommodate for the 38mm hoses. But that's, no that's no biggie, that's easy to do. Further forward is the AC condenser. This old jigger is the Stocko Crown one which pretty well junk. I did pressure test it but it is just, just old and really bulky, especially where the outlets come out of the condenser. So we've opted for a modern one. I contacted the crew at Noosa Radiators and I gave Luke the dimensions. I said, this is the size of it. I also would like to have the receiver drive built in and I want both outlets on one side. Luke did some research and funnily enough, an FG Falcon one was actually well suited for the application, which in turn is a bonus because I've actually been able to use the standard pipe from the condenser back to the AC compressor. I did have to heat it up and bend it a little bit. It wasn't gonna fit in the standard application, but after some shimingying, word of the day, it's fitting and it's in there nice and tight. That gives us a lot more room for the intercooler core. I've then cut out the front bar to gauge an idea of sizes. We've got about 100 mil to deal with in between the condenser and the front bar. So our mate Dave from FFM has saved the day. Dave does a bunch of quality work down there. He mainly specializes in airboxes. He did a airbox for Owls Cummins Power Patrol. Top quality work. He also makes airboxes for 79 series, 200 series, 300 series. I think he's doing Hilux. But he also specializes in just, I suppose, drag cars and, and high quality four wheel drive fabrications. So he said he's had this core on the shelf. This is a 635 by 295 by 90 mil thick. And we've also had these custom tanks designed for us. So Dave spent the morning drawing these up in Fusion 360. We've even engraved our Skid Factory logo on there, which is pretty cool. We then used his massive big pan brake, folded them up, and Dave's tacked them to now give us this not finished product because now we've got to weld it on, onto the intercooler. I did ask Dave to put his FFM logo on there, but he said he didn't want to put his name to my crappy weld. So we've got to get these tanks welded on the core. Then we've got to mount the core. Above that, I do want to mount a transmission cooler, but until we get the intercooler in there, we don't know where it's going to go. We've got a bunch of Raceworks clamshell clamps to retain the boost and then it feeds up into our Bosch 82 mm throttle body. So let's get some mounting and get to some welding, get the job done. Get to some mountain. Get to some mountain, did that sound weird, did it? Yeah, let's get to some mountain. <laughs>
power tap. Intercool is all mounted up, ready to go. We're gonna now move on to some pipe work. Uh, the custom end tanks and sort of making it all ourselves is obviously the downside to that is it's very time consuming, particularly the welding part of the stuff. So um, if you can get away with a bolt on one, then it's always a good idea. Uh, end tanks and separate intercoolers is becoming a thing. We can buy the core and you can buy the tanks that suit it. And that might seem like a, more work and not necessary but sometimes you might want to have an outlet here and an outlet down there so being able to mix and match with with separate end tanks is obviously a, a handy thing not all cars are Sylvia's that you just bolt an intercooler on unfortunately who even has a Sylvia I've never haven't seen one for years all, if there's not a case without a front mount these days they're all dead <laughs> no seriously you never see them yeah true that mm. everyone's scared to drive them because of the police <laughs> There's more crowns on the road than Sylvia's. Yeah. <laughs> on the top here, we've got a um, RX-7 oil cooler. Uh, we use one of those on Gav's Hakasuka as an engine oil cooler, but we're actually using it on this car as a transmission cooler. Uh, this thing is way too low, and Woody refuses to make it higher, so we're going to take the, the, the deep pan off the trans and put a, a normal pan on it. Downside to that is obviously you lose oil capacity, so we're going to pick up oil capacity and cooling by adding this cooler on here. And... The beauty of it is the big, giant, weird crown grill fits perfectly over the top of it. So um, stacking coolers like this is a good idea. If you have a cooler, another cooler, another cooler, another cooler, the one at the end is, going to be, is not going to be as efficient as the one at the front. So putting them on top of each other uh, reduces the amount of heat buildup on the way through to the radiator. So this is a pretty good setup. We've got the clamshells from Raceworks welded straight on the end here. We had the option of moving them out here, but what he was concerned about being able to get the bumper off, which I guess is is a valid concern. It's annoying because we had to mess around and cut things up and do all that sort of stuff, but that's that's cars for you. So now he, he will be able to just take the pipe off and pull the bumper off without having to sort of unbolt the intercooler and pull it all off at once, which would be a bit of a pain, I suppose. We've got a step up from two and a half into three on the turbo side. That's going to go down through the uh, hole in the guard, straight into the cooler. On this side, same thing, three inch up, up into here, and we're going to step up into three and a half inch into the throttle body. So hopefully we'll be able to make those pipes singularly and not have to put joiners in the middle. It's just, it's just neater that way. All you've got to do is make sure that you can actually put the pipe back in there once you've got your whatever shape it is. So let's uh, get stuck into that and hope for the best.
That intercooler is crooked, yo. It's not, because I put a level on it. No, it's, I can see it's crooked from here. It's your car that's crooked. I am far from a qualified fabricator, nor do I have the experience of Alan, but I am very stoked with how this turned out. It's very rewarding to do the job myself, seeing as this is my own car, even though everyone's going to give me crap about my bird poop welds, and it's definitely not up to FFM uh, standards, but I think we did a pretty good job on the intercooler. We've got to say a match out, out to Dave for saving the day and hooking us up with this intercooler. Dave does make top quality dustproof air boxes for Land Cruisers and he has got a bunch of experience with fabrication on extreme four-wheel drives and drag cars. So I'm going to link Dave's Instagram and business in the description if you want to check out some of Dave's work. We've made a heap of progress on the car. I wanted to get it, nut out all the fabrication so then we can move on to, to other things. It's hard when you want to fit a catch can and a washer bottle and a coolant overflow and you've got to have everything in place. So the cooler piping was the main thing. So I've cut the holes in the side here. I'm hoping that a catch can can fit in the side here. We're going to make, hopefully maybe make up a little box for the air intake on that side too. There's still radiator fabrication to get done. I want to sort out the air con pipes. So still a bunch of work to get done. Stay tuned for that. Maybe next week we've also got a... Do you want to tell him what's... Something completely different. We've also got a TD42 engine rebuild coming up, which we've, we're going to be building the engine in the next couple of days. So that might come out next week too. I'm not too sure. If you want to support the show, head, oh, I'm not even wearing a Skid Factory shirt. Buy a tool pro shirt. If you, want, if you want to support the show, head over to the merch store, www.theskidfactory.com. We've got a bunch of hoodies in stock, actually. Some would say we may be even overstocked. So jump in there and get yourself a Skid Factory hoodie. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time with not a crown, maybe some TD40. Actually, why don't we just keep, we'll maybe do a crown next week too. Maybe. Well, I don't know. See you, homies. Thanks for watching. Cheers. I said thanks for watching twice again. It's like the out, it's the, thanks for watching. Oh, wait. Stop moving. I'm trying to I want to track you. No, the Patreon credits are rolling. Wonder if people pause and see the Easter eggs. Most of the time, there's a guy that's put his name as what's for dinner, and I change that every time. What's for dinner tonight? Pork chops, mash and veg. Mm, mm, Is that mm. what's for dinner? What are you having for dinner? I don't know. There's beans. <laughs> beans. I just ate heaps of beans while I was in there. <laughs> some of that, some of that South African jerky from that shop in Palmview. That was mint. That was very chilly, very nice. How's it? Does it work if I look through it? Or is that a you, only a you thing? Am I, am I legally allowed what, to do that? What does it do? Have you copyrighted it? The jump cut edit. Where you hit, keep changing your spot even though you haven't moved because all the frames have been deleted. We don't do that here in Australia. Give me an example. Yeah, everyone does that still. We don't. You make me do things 18 times when you could be just jump cutting. <laughs> When you measure the turbo, Alan, can you please explain to me when someone says I've got a 98 mil turbo, where are you actually measuring from? What's the part? Well, this is the trick with, with turbos is different manufacturers measure them at different points and, and the reason they do that is just to differentiate themselves between each other. Um, oh, real? Yeah. Uh, inducer size is a common measurement, uh, so 71 mil in this case, I think that's 68. So if you say I've got a 71 mil turbo, I should say I've got a... Well, how big is your turbo inducer? Mostly they're talking about inducer size because in motorsport they limit turbo size by inducer because that's the that's everything's got to breathe through that hole. Okay. But other turbo brands will measure the, the outer. Um, Garrett used to measure outers like that. That's why this is called a 4094 because that outer there is 94 millimetres. But it's a 68 mil inducer. Uh, and... The 40 is just the turbine so size. You, you said that this one's smaller. So this has got a bigger inducer, but smaller extrusor. Yes, it does. Um, but it also, there's a, there's another little thing that's, that's also come in in recent times, which they call extended tips. So it's actually smaller overall size, but then it's got these, these tips actually come out further. So you end up with more area. So there's a lot.
there's a lot. So of... where do you measure from, right on the base, or do you measure from the extended tip? Well, you would, you, yeah, that's the thing. You, ah. you could you could do both. So you can measure the tip, which I think is 92 mil, and then it's uh, 88 mil, I think. Yep, 88. So there's a little bit to it, and also there's things like height of the compressor as well, which change. So it's uh, there's a little bit to it. Same with the turbine. There's should we be measuring turbos? How many blades there are? Cubic millimeters. How many? Well, <laughs> if, that's why you look at the chart and read the airflow. Well, what if you're in America though? What do you measure it in? Cubic foot. Cubic bald eagles. <laughs> CFMs. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't. That's. You shouldn't talk about eagles like that. No. They, they can't help it if their eagles that they love are actually very small. I just don't like the imperial system. It doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't worry me. It makes as much sense as anything if you once you understand it. But, you know, just a, just need a few thou or off and you'll be right. Don't get that decimal point wrong. Just need a few point oh oh three of a millimeter off and you'll be you'll be fine. See, I can't say a few thou sounds cool. <laughs>